So without further ado, let's begin our presentations. And now I will turn it over to our first speaker, Ms. Josephine Berg. Josephine is the Research and Analysis Manager in the Clean Energy Technology Group at S&P Global Commodity Insights. She analyzes the trends and strategies in the downstream PV markets. And as she is based in Barcelona, she follows the Spanish PV market closely. So Josephine, thank you very much for joining us today. You may take the floor now. Thank you for the thank you for the introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Let me pick the right uh, the right screen to right screen to share. And now you should be able to see. Yeah, looks perfectly. To see, to see the to see the presentation. Yeah. So yeah, so um, so, so as was said in the introduction, I've been following the Spanish market now for for thirteen years, and I'm very excited to see this rapid evolution of uh, of PV in Spain that we've seen over the past uh, just the past years, and now it's really becoming becoming visible across across Spain or we're just taking the train you see more buildings that have PV on the roof so I think that's very that's very exciting because it used to be you know going going from Spain to Germany and you saw all the all the PV installed in Germany and I was wondering like why is this not happening in in Spain and now that is that is finally finally happening happening so I'm going to talk a bit about why this is why this is happening as the basis for the discussion that we will have later So Spain, like I said, it's evolving very quickly. I mean, according to our forecast, Spain would meet its 39 gigawatt target already in uh, 2024, and that's you know six six years six years ahead of time. So we'll see if that target will be will be revised and um, and what will really be the the trajectory till 2030. The big diff, the I mean, Spain already had a Spain already had a little little. Little boom in 2007, 2008, but that was back in the feed-in tariff days, where everything was really driven by uh, by government, 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 direct government incentives. And now we're in a more diverse market and diverse world, where it's a combination of political, corporate, households that have different that have various interests in deploying de deploying PV. And the political support, even if it's, there's a lot of discussion, you know, that it's or that it's 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 market driven, but of course you need the political support, and the political support for PV really took a turn in 2017, when we had the first uh, auctions that were that were announced to meet to get enough capacity to meet the 2020 targets, and then in 2018 we uh, finally got a push for uh, for self self consumption, which has led to a drastic increase in self consumption and distributed generation in Spain. And there have been various laws that have set the set the path uh, along the along the way, and a lot of different decrees uh, that are that are published. And here I'm listed some of the most most important important ones that we've that we had. But it's really there is there is a there is a political ambition in Spain to support to support renewables. Maybe we will hear later. Maybe it's not always it doesn't always feel as very supportive, but the foundation is there, and there isn't. There is an objective in Spain to reach, you know, higher, higher, higher degree of uh, renew renewables in the in the system. You know, with the target to go to get to 100 percent by 2050. And I want to take a step back here to just talk about Spain in terms of the world. I said Spain is leading the way, and Spain is now the largest PV market in Europe, and was in in 2022. And it was the fifth largest PV market in the world, according to our latest uh, latest analysis. And you know, so you have giants, you have China, you know, that just overtaking. You know, it's forty of course forty percent of capacity installed uh, last year. It's always going to, you know, for the next years, it's going to be at least a third of annual additions globally. But among the among the European European markets, Spain is really really ahead here. And 
it's been a, it's been a spectacular year for all all markets last year because um, the total solar market grew by forty three percent year over year, and this was in a high price environment, which is very unusual. Normally, so solar projects get pushed, you know, get get built when module prices are low. But last year, and we're going to talk about supply chain, cons chain constraints later, it was a high price environment, but still there was this large increase. And uh, you know, some, some, some projects have it more challenging, but we saw this very big growth, not, yeah, in, in particular, I would say, in, um, in the distributed generation, generation sector, but also utility scale projects also in Spain that saw the the benefits of accelerating accelerating the build out in a high price high price environment in terms of in getting in terms of being able to get the electricity price and the PPAs at a higher higher level than than in previous in previous years. So I talked about distributed generation how that's really taken off and if we look at Spain and this is the Spain and the the share of the the share of the of the of, in, of installations of the distributed distributed generate and generation installation. I'm sorry, something something happened to my my title title on the top of the on the top of the slide, but it should say that uh, distributed generation is really increasing its its share in the market right now. And we've seen we've seen this increase last year, especially because of the high electricity prices for consumers. And consumers really gaining that interest in uh, in installing installing PV PV plants, and we see that continuing. And both utility scale and distributed generation are going to grow over the next next years. But if we look in a comparison here to the right, and on a European scale, if we look, we see that Spain is still going to be relatively a utility scale market because we see very big projects and very big interest here in further utility scale developments. On the market. Now the different ways to get to the market, to the to the market in Spain, to kind of see what is what is really driving driving the market. So you have kind of two two combinations here. You have what we would call normally in um, when we talk about different markets, we talk a lot about unsubsidized PV right now. So that is usually PV that is installed without um, uh, with without feed-in tariffs or without direct direct support from the government. However, in Spain, it is it is a combination here because a lot of the self-consumption plants they can get support from the government. There are incentives from the government to increase the share of self-consumption or the use of renewables among among corporate corporate consumers. Um, the the whole the whole development of utility scale PV is very much linked to uh, political political support and political ambitions, and and also for the for the for future. If you look at hydrogen, that is also you know it's it's a market segment which is also it also will will depend a lot on the political support that will be that will be given. So there are very diff, you know there are very diff, there are different ways to build PV in, in Spain, but there's also very much related to different different incentive schemes and different market different market trends that we see. But what this really leads to is this diversity of installations so that we have everything from very small from even off-grid pumping systems um, for for water to very large very very large macro plants. And if I look into the self-consumption segment, like I said, there have been very big advance, advances since 2018. So we've had um, the first the first set of legislation was just to remove the previous uh, charges that had been set on grid connection or grid access for self-consumption plants. And then the strong push came in 2019 when it was a so it became allowed to share cell consumption. Um, you could sell, you were granted to have a re remuneration 
for your excess electricity. There was the separation of the below 100 kilowatt and the above 100, 100 kilowatt. And that really clarified, clarified the landscape, also allowing for third party ownership of plants. And then from that, that legislation has been, it has been evolving. So for example, we expanded the definition of self-consumption. Um, so now you can, now you can share self, you can self-consume within an area of two or a radius of two kilometers from the production site. Which is, you know, which opens up for a lot of new possibilities. Still, a lot of them still to be still to be explored because it's still very it's still very new. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have the utility scale activity. So we have the utility scale projects. A lot of them have been around, you know, been around 50, 50 megawatts because that was the limit for. Uh, for if you needed to get your permits via the region or via via the central government, but then a lot of projects realized that maybe it was even going to be more beneficial to try to go with this via the central government because the regional administrations were overburdened with applications. And I think that oh, being overburdened, I think that's a really big aspect of the Spanish utility scale landscape. Because you can see here the activity and how many projects that are in that that are you know that are being developed, you can see that this is this is a big this is a big challenge actually for for building a lot of the capacity. So to the left here you see uh, PV project transactions, so acquisitions of uh, of PV projects over the years in Spain. And this is from in, until September 2022. So you see that there's this has been a big boom from 2020. It's been the largest market for transactions in Spain, but a lot of this has been very big pipelines, a lot of early stage projects, just companies trying to get into the market and get a position, it, get a position in the market, and then they'll try to figure out which projects will actually be, be built. And then if we look at real real pipeline and the project, the individual projects that we track. Uh, we, in, our, in, our, in our project database, you know, we see that we have, we have at least 30, 30 gigawatt that received the, the, environmental, the environmental impact assessment on time, which was the deadline was in, at, the end of, at the end of January. If you already had grid connection, and I think we're going to talk more about that now, like this permitting, permitting boom in, in Spain. At least this is a minimum 30 gigawatt because we don't have all the information from all the regions and a lot of the individual projects. So a lot of these 30 gigawatt are the ones that were approved through the central through the central government. And then we have at least another you know, 40, 40 gigawatts of projects in planning. And we will see how this develops now because um, there's still a lot of uncertainty and how, how are you gonna get grid grid access exactly what's going to be the be the future now for all these projects how how much is actually going to get built or how much is just going to be papers um changing hands uh, because uh, someone needs to buy someone needs to buy pipeline so this is um yeah it's it's a very exciting market sometimes very frustrating and i think that's what we'll be discussing discussing later but definitely spain is moving forward it's going to meet its uh, target well ahead of time but there will still be a lot of a lot of challenges and a lot of um, you know, a lot of considerations along the way and with that i will leave it on to our following speakers so that we can then hear their views <laughs> 